look at this door panel right here. Tell me if something doesn't seem fucked up. It almost feels like something's broken inside that door. It's time to investigate. Should've got a money shot of all this. Uh, 69, fucking ketchup packet. So this is why that door panel feels so loose. Both of the mounting points that attach the door panel to the truck are broken. Oh shit. Ruby Red just keeps on giving me stuff. All right, so I'd be lying if I were to tell you that I wasn't prepared and this all just popped up. I've known about this for a while. Ruby Red's driver's door panel always felt loose. And I found a guy that makes replacement brackets for the envoys. And then I looked just to see if he had like made any video about installing them. There wasn't nothing there. So, I'm gonna do a video about installing these motherfuckers. Let's install them. So no GM. This should be a 7. say that the guy's version's a lot more solid than this version. and stuff like that down with a power tool. Just a quarter inch. Looks a lot beefier. Insert, I can't find the whole joke here. Wasn't too bad. Shit. Wasn't bad at all. Over the next few weeks, I'm just going to drive Ruby Red like I normally do and see how that guy's brackets hold up over a couple weeks of normal use.
Well, a little bit of an update. Been driving Ruby Red every day for the last couple weeks. Haven't had a single problem with these door panel brackets. Still as solid as the day that I installed them. For what it's worth, the amount of times that I've actually used this door panel with these brackets installed, it's good enough for me to leave feedback for them on eBay. So it's good enough for me to do a little bit of a video on them too. So, fuck it, two thumbs up on this motherfucker. So when I got these brackets here, they came with a little note from the seller. I've got his confidential stuff kind of blocked off with tape. Anyway, what he says is if there's any issues fitting it, some tabs can be shaved down. He also goes on to say in his, they fit perfectly, but it was a, you know, a tight fit. And, well, same here. They fit perfectly for me, but that's not to say they're going to fit perfectly in every truck. Just want to throw that out there. I'm going to throw up some stuff that I filmed the day that I installed these things, and then we're going to go for a road test. But technically, the bracket part of the video is over. So thanks for watching. Like, see, subscribe. 50K coming up. You'll win free shit. Yeah. That is just awesome that somebody makes stuff that you just can't get. You know what I mean? That is just so fucking cool. I didn't contact this guy on eBay and say, Hey, you know who I am? I've got millions of views on YouTube, man. You should give me some free brackets and I'll give you a shout out. I don't work like that. That's some pussy shit right there. I'm a regular guy. I want brackets that hopefully will fix my ruby red princess. I buy them from eBay just like everybody else. Whether this guy wants any kind of shout out from me or not, doesn't matter. I could tell just from looking at him, I was like, damn, these motherfuckers are legit. You know what I'm saying? GM should have done it his way. You know what I'm saying? After I found the brackets on eBay and I bought them, somebody had to have done a video on these things. I think what I did was I typed GMC Envoy door panel bracket broken into Google. What came up was a video of me doing the removal and installation of door panels in the Envoy and then direct copycat videos of pulling GMC Envoy door panels. Why the fuck would you go and just do the exact same thing? What the fuck are you thinking? Well, despite all that, like, no one did a video about how to fix this. One particular person didn't do a video about how to fix it because they don't sell these brackets. They just sell knockoff Chinese parts. Hey, what, whatever they want to do, more power to them, you know what I'm saying? Now, before you cry babies, get all mad and send me a message and say, you're a fucking hypocrite because you made a video that somebody else did, blah, 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 blah. I'll explain this again since you guys are clearly, clearly retarded. Yes, other people had done videos for replacing the spark plugs in the inline six trailblazer. However, those videos were not helpful enough for people that those people in turn came to the trailblazer forum that I hung out at and we're posting questions particularly about plugs number one, five, and six, which were omitted from those Trailblazer spark plug replacement videos. I decided to do a video to show the removal and installation of all six spark plugs to show getting your tools and all your shit down to get five and six out and then moving the wire harness out of the way to get one out because I was tired of repeating myself in text form on a website. Now, another little known fact about this is during those text discussions, which probably went on for at least a year before that video was first released, was the fact that some of those YouTube people were actually coming and defending their videos and basically saying, I showed you how to replace the spark plugs. One guy didn't show replacing any of the spark plugs, and my comment in that thread was, I didn't see anything I would have saw more if I was taking a nap. I thought it was funny. Other people agreed. My post got deleted because, you know, they're trying to do the family-oriented shit. It's what separated us from all the other forms at the time. Whatever. That's old news. That's where the whole, that other video would push you to sleep thing came in because, I'm like I said, I would have got more information if I was asleep because the guy didn't show removing any of the spark plugs. Now when you do the most in-depth shit and somebody comes behind you and does something that just totally fucking sucks, whether they're, they're showing power tools or they're not showing you different locations or showing you exactly how to unplug some of those harnesses which can be assholes and they just say, just unplug all your connectors. It's like, no, it's not just unplug the connectors you fucking retard. Show these motherfuckers exactly how the big four pin can be a dick and you need like a pocket screwdriver or a pick to get in there to release it, not just unplug the connectors. That's not doing shit, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'll say, what the fuck are you guys thinking? What are you thinking? Y'all just watered down versions of the original, you know what I'm saying? That's why I just call these guys clones, you know what I mean? Just clones. 
Yeah, it, it, that's the shit, that shit had been done for years, and y'all just gonna clone it. But that's a fad now on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Somebody does. It's especially, especially the videos where people just pour magic piss into the car. Now the people that pour magic piss into the car get cloned by somebody else, and get cloned by somebody else, and somebody else. And now it's just one big fuck fest of people pouring magic piss in cars that doesn't fix anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually probably the only person who was offered money to tell you guys to pour their magic piss into your car that like laughed at them. Like, I'm not, I'm not telling people that watch me to do that. I wouldn't do that to my own car. Get the fuck out of here. And you want to group me with the people that are fighting for that opportunity? Like, fuck y'all. All right, so I've had these brackets installed in, I almost called it minty green. I'm sorry, Ruby Red. So I've had these brackets installed in Ruby Red for a couple weeks now, and they've held up really good. So it was time to leave the seller feedback. In cases like this where it's like items that are built by somebody, I'm not necessarily leaving feedback for the transaction. I'm leaving feedback for the actual product. Does that make sense? Well, it makes sense to me. So I made sure that the dude left feedback for me first because I'm the buyer. I'm just responsible for making the payment after the buy it now. He had left feedback, so it was time for me to do the same thing. Left the good feedback, of course. I mean, he offers a product that fixed my car. He earned the good feedback, you know what I mean? After I left the feedback, I refreshed the page just to make sure that my feedback did pop up in the way that I typed it, you know what I'm saying? And some just caught my eye. I wasn't looking for this. It was like the transaction before mine. It was good feedback, but it threw in a little jab there where it said something like, I can't believe the markup on these things. Let me fucking guess, Mr. eBay feedback lever. You're the type of person that probably expects the product to be available for the cost of manufacturing. You know, forget all the other work that went into it. All I'm doing is just basically buying a piece of plastic, right? Well, wrong. You expect this dude to design these brackets, to build them. There may have been prototypes involved, you know what I'm saying? Trying different designs, maybe some trial and error, some shits did or did not work, you know what I'm saying? So this guy buys a product, it fixes his truck, and then he just... He says, yeah, they're good brackets, but he complains about the price. What, what the fuck is wrong with people? Seems to be a common theme. What the fuck is wrong with people? It kind of reminded me about years ago when the cool thing to do with the Trailblazers was make it so that both of the red lights and the tail lights would light up when the parking lights were on. I'm going to try to do the too long didn't watch version on this, but the way I remember it was you took two Trailblazer taillight circuit boards and one Envoy taillight circuit board. You took all three of them apart. You took the two sockets, which had four pins from the Envoys. You transplanted them over to the two middle sockets on the Trailblazers, and you wired those up so that all four pins were active. So it would be parking lights on top and bottom. I think I got it right that time. I built probably a dozen sets of these things, you know what I'm saying, and I offered them for sale for a pair of modified dual park circuit boards for the Trailblazer. It was a hundred dollar shit. And when I would do them, I would also actually put them on my truck so that way they could be water tested. You know what I'm saying? In my truck too, I could also subject those taillight boards to serious, serious fucking vibrations. So I knew that if it would survive in my truck, it would survive in another truck under regular use. You know what I'm saying? A lot of time went into these things. When it was all said and done, by the time you factored in three taillight circuit boards, the shipping and the labor, dude, I made like 20 bucks. But I just did it to A, have something to do, and B, offer something to people that wasn't readily available. And also an alternative to people just like shoving wires into connectors and who the fuck does that, but whatever. That guy's feedback reminded me of the feedback I got there. It's like, you want $100 for two circuit boards? All she did was take three circuit boards and make two out of them. Like people thought that the time that I put into it wasn't worth anything. And instead of like taking a couple bucks off the price, I just said, well, I'm not selling them to you then, ever. And I, and I didn't. There's still 10 pairs out there riding around with all four lights lighting up in the back when the parking lights are on. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty awesome. The moral of the story is I got by without you penny pinchers. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure that this guy will get by without penny pinchers. People are just cheap and complaining. Well, well, I'm complaining here about people, but at least I'm not cheap. You know what I'm saying? I understand that this dude put the time into making these things and it wasn't just a matter of just selling a couple pieces of plastic. There was serious time involved. Then I want to spend 40 bucks to fix a door panel. Not, well, actually, yeah, because that shit was just driving me fucking nuts. The fact that something was, you know, mechanically loose on it. It's 40 bucks well spent as far as I'm concerned. If I remember right, though, years and years and years ago, the alternative was to, 
to buy a complete new door panel. Anyway, there you have it. My Ruby Red Princess has a super awesome tight door panel now. Pretty awesome. Guy makes these parts even awesomer. Just fucking awesome all the way around. So thanks for checking me out. And if you guys look at the counter, we're getting closer. Every fucking day we're getting a little bit closer to the big 50,000. What does it mean? Well, it means you guys are going to get a chance to win fat shit. You know what I'm saying? So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Quit being a fucking pussy and just subscribe. If you've already subscribed, a big thank you and thumbs up. You know what I mean? What do I get for having subscribers? I don't get shit for it. You know what I'm saying? But when I wake up on a Saturday or a Sunday and I'm like, what am I going to do today? I can either like sit around and get baked or I could go out and like, you know, show something that I'm doing on a project or whatever. And it's like, you know what? There is 46,659 people out there that said, you know what, we want to see more of your shit, Mayu 3 and that's when I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Get high and then fucking do the videos, you know what I'm saying? There's no extra pay, there's no accolades, there's no girls lined up out here waiting to suck me off, you know what I mean? There's nothing extra out of it. It's just a little bit of a motivation for me, which is awesome. Also, if anybody comes behind me and copies this video, you can eat a fat dick, you know what I'm saying? Hi, hello mates. Today's road test, 2015 Malibu LTZ. I don't necessarily know what that means. It's just like a Malibu, which means it sucks. But this isn't about this Malibu and its degree of suck. It's about me out on a road test. You guys remember that Atlantis Morissette song where she's like a no smoking sign on your cigarette break, that one forget the name of it doesn't really matter but there's one part of the song that says it's the good advice that you just didn't take who would have thought it figured well anyway that's what I want to discuss I have this conspiracy theory that many employers don't want to see their employees you know get ahead in life you know what I mean you know I had a manager you know, explain to me that I shouldn't be working, you know, outside of working hours. And really it was just a way for them to, to get more out of me, which is not going to happen. We are like totally, totally fucking dead at work. Okay. Totally dead. Right now it's 1.12 in the afternoon. I've been at work since 8 o'clock and I have cumulatively flagged 1.4 hours. I mean, we're dead. The car I'm driving right now is just old inventory. Is everything okay with the car? Take it for a ride. Just recheck it. Make sure everything's cool. We get paid for that. You know. They kind of do look out for us when we're really, 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 really slow. But you know, the service writer was all, I'm so sorry, we're so slow, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's not your fault. I told her that I'd, I'm just glad I didn't follow somebody else's advice that, you know, I shouldn't be working outside of working hours. Because if I followed that advice, I would really be in, in, up the fucking creek right now. It's actually been a slow week. I might have made 15 hours, and that's a big stretch. What are you going to do? Get mad? Good thing that last weekend I was popping in ball joints and what else did I do? I did something else too, but it was, it was enough that, okay, it's slow this week. Who cares? I'm doing okay. He's not the first. Several people that I've worked for that carried the stupid manager title have tried to tell me that, you know, it's, you know working outside of work is kind of frowned upon. I guess that's what they teach you in manager school. How to keep your employees down and in line, I guess, you know? Fuck you, fuck your line, you're not paying my fucking bills and you don't even fix cars, the fuck you gonna tell me? See, so yeah, like I said before, this show ain't gonna stop. No matter what these fucking jerk offs try to tell me and they're, and they're, and they're trying to kick knowledge to a fucking 42 year old fucking veteran in this motherfucker. This is what the last fucking dickhead said. If I wasn't making enough money in my day job that I had to work nights and weekends, I wouldn't be working at that day job. Um, well, when your workload fluctuates from actually day to day, but you know, week to week, basically, when that, when that shit fluctuates and you can't count on it, who the fuck wouldn't hustle on the side? Oh, I know who wouldn't hustle on the side. Motherfuckers that just like to party and get high and get drunk all fucking weekend and just fucking drool in front of a TV. 
you know, real fucking winners there. Let's watch the fucking football games all weekend, man. Not make any money. That sounds like fucking a blast. Sign me the fuck up to look at men's asses all afternoon and not get paid. That sounds like a really good time. Actually, it's not. Why the fuck am I still yelling? That, I mean, I just use football and men's asses as a... It could be anything. You could be watching a fucking... Uh, uh, you could binge watch the fucking... Uh, well, what's the show with the hot girl and they were all dorks? The Big Bang Theory, the one that's not funny. You could be watching that all fuck. I don't give a fuck what it is. What the fuck are you going to tell me? You could tell me about uh, Penny's breasts in great detail. I'm sure that they're very... Um, very awesome IRL. Not a mean. 